Welcome YouTubers to another episode in my Grammar Hero series. In today's video, we're going to discuss similar figures, which is a topic you must know in order to be successful on the mathematics knowledge subtest of the Armed Services Vocational Aptitude Battery, that is the ASVAB. More specifically, we're going to start today's video by reviewing the two requirements for figures to be considered similar. After that, we're going to work on some uh, very basic practice problems. And then to finish today's video, we're going to work on some word problems that should closely mirror what you'll see on the actual ASVAB. Uh, if you're following along at home, I strongly encourage you to make an effort to work out all of these practice problems on your own scratch paper. In light of the fact you're not allowed to use a calculator or a reference sheet on the ASVAB, I also want to mention that you should make an effort to uh, work out all the arithmetic by hand. So all that said, let's go ahead and get started with today's video. As I mentioned, we're going to take a look at the two requirements for similarity to start today's video, and then we're going to work on the practice problems. So um, as you can see here, any two polygons are similar if one, uh, their corresponding angles are congruent, and two, the measures of their corresponding sides are proportional. Okay, so in this example, we have triangle ABC as well as triangle DEF. And let's see first if their corresponding angles are congruent. Uh, in this case, we should recognize that angle A in triangle ABC corresponds with uh, angle D in triangle DEF. Angle B corresponds with angle E. And angle C finally corresponds with angle F. These marks indicate that these angles are in fact congruent. That is, this single mark indicates angle A is congruent with angle D. This double mark indicates that angle B is congruent with angle E. And this triple mark indicates that angle C is in fact congruent with angle F. So in light of that, we know these two triangles uh, have corresponding angles that are congruent. All right. And more often than not, you're not going to have to apply your knowledge of that rule uh, to solve too many problems involving similarity. That said, the second requirement is very important. And as you'll see in just a few minutes, uh, we're going to make use of it to solve uh, all the problems in today's video. And again, it says the measures of their corresponding sides are proportional. So first, let's identify the corresponding sides in triangle uh, ABC and triangle DEF. Okay, so as we can see, we have side AB right here. And of course, if we look at triangle DEF, we should see that that's gonna correspond with side uh, DE. So let's go ahead and write that down. Again, in the, I'm gonna write triangle ABC and triangle DEF. And we're just identifying their corresponding sides. And as I mentioned, AB, as we can see, corresponds with DE. Okay? And if we keep looking at these two triangles, we should recognize that side BC in triangle ABC corresponds with side EF in triangle DEF. So let's mark that. Again, uh, side BC corresponds with side EF. And finally, we should recognize that side CA corresponds with side FD. So that looks like this side CA corresponds with FD. Okay, so we've identified our pairs of corresponding sides. But according to the second requirement, we have to ensure that their corresponding sides are all proportional with each other. So in order to do that, I'm just going to make these into fractions and set them equal to each other. In other words, the proportion between side AB and side DE has to be proportional with side BCEF, which also has to be proportional with side CA and FD. If this holds true, will know that their corresponding sides in these two triangles are proportional and therefore they are similar. Um, in light of the fact we have some uh, real values here, we can plug them in in place of uh, the sides that I wrote out and confirm that they are proportional. 
So as you can see, AB is 12, and that's going to be over DE, which is 6. BC is 10. Uh, EF is 5. And finally, CA is 8. Uh, and FD is 4. Uh, if we reduce, we can see that this is uh, 12 divided by 6 is 2. 10 divided by 5 is 2. 8 divided by 4 is 2. So as we can see, the, the corresponding sides in both these triangles are all proportional with each other, which means we know that these two triangles are in fact similar. Okay, And we're going to make use of this proportionality to solve all the problems in today's video. All right, now that we've discussed uh, the requirements for figures or polygons to be considered similar, let's take a look at a few practice problems. And as I mentioned, we're going to make use of that second requirement uh, to set up proportions uh, to solve these. As you can see for number one, we want to uh, find x in this pair of similar figures. Again, since these are similar figures, we know that corresponding sides have to be proportional with each other. And again, uh, if we start by identifying the corresponding sides, we can see that side AB corresponds with ED and CA corresponds with FE. And that looks like this. AB over its corresponding side, ED, has to be proportional with CA over FE. Now if we plug in these real values, we can see that we'll be able to solve for x. AB, of course, is 3. Again, that's right here. ED is 6. Uh, CA is 4. And FE is x. If we cross multiply, we'll be able to solve this one pretty quickly. That is, if we do 3 times x, we'll see that's 3x. And 6 times 4 is 24. Divide both sides by 3 to get x by itself. This crosses out, leaving us with x equals 24 divided by 3, or 8. Therefore, we know this side, Fe, is 8. Okay. Again, we use the fact that corresponding sides in similar figures have to be proportional with each other, which means AB over ED had to be proportional with CA over FE. Okay, so for the rest of these problems, I'm not going to write this out. More often than not, uh, people can solve these without writing out the corresponding sides over each other. So let's take a look at number two. Uh, we can see that we have a quadrilateral here, a pair of quadrilaterals here, um, one of which is rotated on its side. But that said, we should easily recognize that CD corresponds with JF. So that's going to be 12 over 18 equal to corresponding sides uh, AD, which is 14, over uh, FG, which is X. Okay, and now we're just solving for x. Before, before we proceed in this case, uh, we kind of want to make this problem a little bit easier. And to do that, we're going to reduce this uh, fraction on the left-hand side. As we should see, 12 and 18 are divisible by 6. 12 divided by 6 is 2, uh, whereas uh, 18 divided by 6 is 3. So this becomes 12, 2 over 3 equals 14 over x. And again, some of you might have been tempted to reduce this by uh, dividing uh, 18 and 14 by 2. You cannot do that in this case because we need to keep this proportion uh, equal in order to solve this one. So uh, just keep that in mind as you work on these. Uh, so now let's cross multiply. Again, we have 2 times x, which is 2x, and uh, 3 times 14. Let's go ahead and work that off to the side. 14 times 3. 3 times 4 is 12. Carry your 1. Uh, 3 times 1 is 3 plus 1 is 4. So we can see this is 4x equals 42. 
Let's divide both sides by 2. This is going to cross out, leaving you with x equals 42 divided by 2. Uh, 2 divided by, or 4 divided by 2 is 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. So we can see in this case, this side x is 21. Okay. And finally, we have, uh, again, a pair of quadrilaterals, um, and we want to solve for x. This one's fairly easy to see. We can see that qr corresponds with side uh, lm, so that looks like this. 15 over 20 equals, uh, and again, uh, in the numerator, we have this one first, and in the denominator, we have this figure. So we're going to go ahead and put RT right here, and that's going to be over MO, which is 12. Uh, to make this one easier to solve, we want to uh, reduce this fraction on the left-hand side. And as we can see, 15 and 20 are both divisible by 5. 15 divided by 5 is 3, whereas 20 divided by 5 is 4. So this is 3 fourths equals X over 12. Now we can solve by cross multiplication. Four times X is four X. And then three times 12 is uh, 36. Let's go ahead and uh, divide both sides by four to get X by itself. This crosses out leaving us with X equals 36 divided by four, which we should know is gonna be nine. Okay, so this one is 9. All right, so now let's take a look at some word problems that should closely mirror what you'll see on the ASVAB. For number 4, you can see it says, CJ is 5 feet tall and cast a 7-foot shadow. At the same time, a tree cast a 14-foot shadow. The triangles formed are similar. Find the height of the tree. So again, all we do is have to put corresponding sides over each other and then set them equal to each other. So again, corresponding sides are 5 and x. So we can do 5 over x. That has to be proportional to or equal to uh, 7 over 14, which is this. And to make this math a little easier, we can reduce this fraction on the right by dividing 7 by 7 and 14 by 7. 7 divided by 7 is 1. 14 divided by 7 is 2. Okay, so now that that's reduced, we can cross multiply. That is, we can do 1 times x, which is just x, and then 5 times 2, which is 10. And as we can see, uh, this tree is x, which means it's 10 feet tall. Okay, so let's take a look at number five now. It says a tree cast a 60 foot long shadow. At the same time, a nearby eight foot post cast a 12 foot shadow. How tall is the tree? In this case, we weren't given a diagram, so we're gonna have to make our own. Again, we have a 60 foot tree. All right, we have a tree that cast a 60 foot long shadow. Okay, and as we can see, this would make a triangle. Then we're told a eight foot post. So here's an eight foot post, it's eight feet tall. Let me rewrite that real quick. I'm gonna make this a little bigger just so it's easier to see. This is an eight foot tall post, uh, cast a 12 foot shadow. So here's our shadow, it's 12 feet. And again, if we connect those, we can see it makes a triangle. Uh, we have to understand that these are going to be uh, similar uh, triangles. In other words, uh, we want to know how, how tall the tree is, which we can represent with an X there. And if we remember the second requirement for figures to be considered similar, we know that corresponding sides are going to be proportional. X corresponds with 8 and 60 corresponds with 12. So in other words, x over 8 has to equal uh, 60 over 12. 
Okay, so now let's reduce this fraction before we solve. Again, this is x over 8. 60 divided by 12, we should know is 5, but we can write that as 5 over 1. Again, 60, 12 goes into 65 times, 12 goes into 12 one time. Now we can solve via cross multiplication. Uh, 1 times x is x. 8 times 5 is 40. So in other words, uh, if x represents the height of this tree, we can see that the tree is 40 feet tall. All right, number six says a grain silo cast a shadow of 40 feet while a nearby fence post cast a shadow of two feet. The fence post is five feet high. How tall is the grain silo? So let's go ahead and start this one by making a diagram so we can illustrate what's going on. Again, we have a grain silo, which kind of looks like this. casting a 40 foot uh, long shadow. So we know its shadow is this direction, 40 feet. And we're told similarly that a fence post that is two feet or five feet tall cast a shadow of two feet. And if we connect these figures, we can see that they make triangles, right triangles in particular. And we want to know how tall this grain silo is. So in other words, we want to know how tall it is right here. And uh, we're going to use a proportion to solve this one. Again, according to the requirement for figures to be similar, we know their corresponding sides have to be proportional to each other. As you can see, this side corresponds with this side, whereas this side corresponds with this side. So let's go ahead and set that up. It's going to be x over 5 equals 40 over 2. Uh, to make this problem a little easier, we can reduce this fraction on the right here. So this is x over 5 equals uh, 40 and 2 are both divisible by 2. Uh, 40 divided by 2 is 20, and 2 divided by 2 is 1. So with that reduced, we can now cross multiply. 1 times x is x. 5 times 20 is 100. So therefore, we can see that this grain silo uh, is 100 feet tall. Okay? Uh, so that's it for today's video. Again, as long as you know that corresponding sides and similar figures are proportional with, with each other, you can set up proportions uh, to solve for the missing values in each of these similar figures. Um, I hope you found this video helpful. If you take a look online, you'll see that there's a lot of information about similar figures, most of which is much more advanced than this and uh, can be overwhelming if you try to learn uh, this concept by looking at those online resources. Um, by all means, you're more than welcome to leave some feedback in the comment section below. But on that note, I'm going to go ahead and cut you loose. Konnichiwa.